Hello everyone, this is Monica Lupion and today I will cover mass transfer equipment. I have to say that I will give a very basic overview of the different equipment uh, available in industry for mass transfer. You will study this in detail in separations in, in, the, in the senior year. So today uh, I think it's just important that you have um, a general idea about the different equipment that you can find in industry related to mass transfer. This is the outline of my presentation. First, I'll give you some indications of the mass transfer operations. Uh, and we'll call a few names uh, of these mass transfer operations in industry. Then we'll pay an attention uh, to mass transfer equipment and we'll see four different examples. And finally, we'll see in more detail a case study, which is a well-mixed tank. Okay, so uh, when, when you study separations in industry, you see that there are, I don't know, uh, dozens of different uh, names for mass transfer operations. But in reality, when you pay attention to what these equipment do, it's just a matter of having different names because the, sometimes the, the, the main or the basic operations are very similar. But nevertheless, when we study mass transfer equipment and mass transfer operations, we pay attention to where the solute goes from one phase to another, either if it, if it goes from one gas to liquid or from liquid to gas. Let's uh, see together a few examples. So we normally, when we talk about an element going from gas phase to liquid phase, we, um, we well, we can define absorption process, dehumidification, and distillation. Distillation, for example, is a combination as well of uh, energy balance because, well, we will separate the different components of a mixture in relation to the boiling point. So we need to put energy into account as well. Um, when we want to separate an element A from liquid phase uh, into gas phase, that is the way around, the other way around, then we call uh, the operations like desorption, which is the same as stripping, and humidification. If we, uh, if we have two liquid phases and we want to transfer the solute from one liquid to another, this is a typical example of liquid-liquid extraction. What about between solid and gas or liquid phase? Well, if we want to transfer the solid from a solid into a fluid phase in general, then we call it drying and leaching. Otherwise, the uh, other way around, the opposite uh, process, if we want to transfer transfer solute from a fluid phase to a solid phase, then we call it adsorption with D and ion exchange. This is a picture, these are two pictures of uh, different processes in industry, most likely a refinery. And you see all the towers here, they are most probably uh, mass transfer equipment, either absorption units or desorption units or distillation columns, because they are usually very, very tall. But in addition to that, I'm pretty sure that you'll find different elements here, different equipment uh, operating uh, mass transfer. Um, the same as heat transfer. They are very, very common in industry. Those are probably the two main pillars of any chemical process when we need to uh, transfer some elements from one phase to another, or if we want to increase the heat of any particular um, uh, stream for some reason. So heat transfer and, and mass transfer are really, really very common in industry. Let's see together a few examples of mass transfer equipment. And we're gonna see four different examples. Bubble towels, spray tower, packed towers, and um, C plate towers. The first, the first example is a bubble towel. What we have here, it's just a tank filled with uh, liquid, and we inject gas. 
with, uh, of course, different concentration in the inlet as in the outlet. Uh, important parameters here in the design of uh, equipment is the height and the diameter as well. But most critical is the diameter of the bubbles. You see in the picture how we produce bubbles uh, using some kind of device. Actually, this is critical for mass transfer operations in general. We need to achieve a very good contact between the faces. That's the only way that a mass transfer can happen if there is an intimate contact between, in this case, the gas phase and the liquid phase. How can we achieve that? Well, one way is to increase the, um, the contact surface. And we do that by uh, producing a very small bubbles where the, let's say, the, the relative, the relative um, surface in relation to you know, just putting contact gas and liquid will is higher, is, is improved, and therefore we can achieve a better efficiency during the mass transfer operation. The next equipment is a spray tower. Uh, it's just, let's say, a mirror of the previous uh, process. In this case, um, what we do is a tank which is full, filled with gas and we spray liquid, it's like a shower of a sprinkle, um, with the same aim as in previous example. We need to have very tiny particles of liquid in order to have um, uh, an improved contact surface in order for the mass transfer to happen in an efficient way. This is a very typical example of the sulfurization process. Uh, let's imagine that we have a boiler and we're burning any kind of biomass or coal and there is a production of sulfur components which are present in the flue gas. What we do here um, is to eliminate the sulfur components in order to meet uh, environmental regulations. So the gas that is getting, the gas that is getting in um, will uh, get into this spray tower with a higher concentration of sulfur. Then we spray in a counterflow, we spray some liquid with some formulation of uh, chemicals that, are, that have the capability of absorbing these sulfur components. As a, and as a result, the gas that is getting out is almost free of sulfur compounds. Then, of course, we need to treat the liquid that is getting out because the, the, it's loaded with sulfur components. Packed tower, this is another example. The concept is similar to what we've seen so far. So we put in contact different phases and trying to optimize the surface area, trying to make the contact better between the phases. But on top of that, what we, de what we do here is to in incorporate some elements inside of the tower. We do this to force the gas or the liquid that is getting in to um, follow a longer pathway to increase the turbulence inside of the column of the tower. The reason why we do this is again to increase the contact, to improve, to make the contact more intimate between the different phases. If we increase the turbulence, then we make the faces to have a better contact and therefore we can achieve a better and more efficient mass transfer operation. There are different, um, there are different um, uh, packing material that we can use depending as well of the type of liquid and the type of gas that we are using in the, in the system. Um, one thing that I should mention is that, well, these, the packed towers could be more efficient that compared to a tower without any packing material. But the cons side is that we need to put more energy into the process to overcome the, the delta P, the pressure loss. Uh, so it, you need to put more energy into the system for the gas and the liquid to go through these packed towers. The, the last example, before we get into the uh, particular case, 
is the plate tower. In this case, what we have is a uh, different trays um, inside of the, of the tower. And in each of these trays, there is equilibrium between uh, the different phases, the gas phase and the liquid phase. We produce as well, well, this trays has some holes and we are able to produce some bubbles to uh, increase the contact between the phases. And depending on the number of trays, we can achieve uh, better efficiency in the mass transfer operation. You see this in detail. This is a very typical example of mass transfer equipment. This is more complex, more sophisticated than the previous one. But you study how the different uh, ratio between the liquid and the gas. I mean, there are different parameters that you need to take into consideration when designing a plate tower. And uh, finally, the case study is a well-mixed tank. This is the diagram here. What we have is a tank filled, a field of liquid, and we incorporate a gas um, and using a device to produce bubbles because we know that um, with bubbles, what we achieve is a better contact between the phases and therefore we can achieve a better mass transfer operation. It's important as well that it's well mixed for the same reason. We want uh, the uh, mixture as homogeneous as possible in order to make the contact better. We're gonna see two different examples and we're gonna apply the equations that we know about mass transfer in two different situations. Uh, one is batch operation and the second case is continuous operation. Uh, in batch operation, when we study the, the equations once the, uh, let's say, the, the, concentration, the concentration has reached some stable number, so we are defining this batch operation when it's a steady state, so there is no dependence with time, something that we call in, in, in chemical engineering as a permanent conditions. So once we reach to these stable conditions, we can apply the mass transfer, uh, the convective mass transfer uh, equation that we know. The molar flux of A is equal to the overall convective coefficient in the liquid times the delta concentration, which is the driving force. Delta concentration is defined as the concentration of the element A in the equilibrium minus the initial concentration of the element A. So with that, we can um, define the total rate of mass transfer just multiplying this molar flux by the interface mass transfer area, A, which is defined as the ratio between the area available for the interface mass transfer divided by the total area uh, of the tower, usually um, in relation to the diameter and also the volume of the, um, of the tank, the capability, the capacity in volume of the tank. We play around with this equation and uh, we apply um, mass balance considering that the concentration in the equilibrium is constant and also that there is no production of chemicals during the process. Um, we play around and um, this is the equation that, you, that we can get, boxing in black. For continuous operation, the approach is a little bit different. So what we do is to um, formulate a mass balance. So what is getting in minus what is getting out plus what is being transferred from one phase to another. Plus, if there is any generation due to chemical reaction, is equal to zero. We can assume that there is no chemical reaction, and therefore the last term, air A times uh, volume, is equal to zero, so we can cancel that. And if we want to calculate what's the concentration of the element A, we can just play around with the uh, equation, uh, the mass balance equation, and, well, you have the definition of the concentration of the element A box in, in black. What is important here is that there is a um, 
uh, you need to know the initial concentration and as well the concentration in the equilibrium which you will have to define uh, taking into yeah. account the uh, for example the Henry laws you can uh, know the um, uh, vapor pressure in the equilibrium in order to calculate this concentration of the element A. So in general, as a summary, if, uh, and again, this is more for the senior course, the separation course, when you find a mass transfer equipment, it's important as always that you understand uh, how the process is, that you can um, understand the main elements of the of the equipment so if it helps a lot if you can dry if you can draw a diagram then we make assumptions for example if there is no uh, chemical generation or if we can consider steady state that will help a lot to solve uh, the the equations involved then in all these equipment you will have to formulate the material balance always in all of them what is getting in, uh, what is getting out, if there is an accumulation within the, within the, the equipment, and if, if there is any generation. Then, um, to determine the boundary conditions and the initial conditions, and finally to solve the equation. So it's, it's very similar to what we've seen so far. In this case, what is usually tricky is to define the equilibrium phase you need to know where to apply the different equilibrium equations and when to apply ideal conditions. But as mentioned, you will know more and you will get a lot of details in your separation course uh, in the next uh, semester. Okay, so if you have any questions, please reach me my email and I will be happy to try to answer any questions you might have.